Interpreting remainders in division word problems. Sometimes when we divide, we're left with some extra. Let's look at 13 divided by three. We have 13 pom-poms to divide and three groups or cups that we're gonna divide them into. Let's divide up our 13 pom-poms evenly into these cups. What about this one? If we put it in a cup, then they won't be even. Right now they each have four, and if we put this yellow pom-pom in one of the cups, then one of them will have five, and the others will have four. This is the remainder. Interpreting remainders means figuring out what to do with the remainder when you solve a division word problem. Here's an example. An egg carton holds six eggs. Bill has 16 eggs. How many egg cartons will he need to put all of his eggs in cartons? A, one carton. B, two cartons. Or C, three cartons. Bill is dividing 16 eggs into groups of six. So to solve this problem, we need to divide. 16 divided by six. 16 divided by six is two remainder four. Hmm, two remainder four is not an answer choice. Two remainder four does not make sense as a number of egg cartons. There's no such thing as remainder four egg cartons. We have to figure out what to do with the remainder of four so that our answer makes sense in real life. Bill has 16 eggs. Each egg carton holds six eggs. So let's start putting some eggs into cartons. There's one carton, two cartons, there's my two, and there's my remainder four. We can fill two egg cartons, but we have four leftover eggs. In the problem though, Bill wants to put all of the eggs in cartons. We need to round up and get an extra carton. It's not going to be full, but we still need it to get all of the eggs into cartons. Now I can see that Bill will need three cartons to fit all 16 eggs. When you solve a division word problem with the remainder, you have three choices. You can round up like we did with Bill's egg cartons. You can ignore the remainder or you can share it. Let's look at examples of each. In some word problems, it makes the most sense to round your answer up by adding one more to the quotient. In the example with Bill's egg cartons, we needed to round up our answer to remainder four up to three. Here's another example. 33 students are going to the museum. If five students can ride in each car, how many cars are needed? So here we're dividing 33 divided by five, which is six remainder three. But of course, there's no such thing as remainder three cars. So we have to think about it. 33 people divided into groups of five. So that's six cars, but then we have three people left out. You can't leave three students behind. So you have to round your answer up and get one extra car so that everybody can get to the museum. There's gonna be some empty seats in that car, but that's okay. So we'll round our answer six remainder three. We'll round it up to seven. The answer is seven cars because six cars is not enough for everyone. Add one more to your answer whenever you can't leave something or someone out. Another choice is to ignore the remainder. When you ignore the remainder, you aren't including it in your answer at all. You just completely drop it. Here's an example of ignore it. Three friends are sharing 13 lollipops. How many lollipops can each person get if they each get the same amount? So we're dividing 13 divided by three, which is four remainder one. And what that means is if we divide 13 lollipops between three friends, they can each have four lollipops with one left over. 
the three friends cannot share one lollipop. That doesn't make sense. You can't easily cut a lollipop into three equal pieces. So the answer here is just four lollipops and the remainder gets dropped or ignored. Each friend can have four lollipops. You'll want to drop a remainder or ignore it anytime it cannot be easily shared or split. You have to think about it like real life. You can share a cookie between two people, but not a balloon. Share it is our third option. Sometimes it makes sense to share a remainder. To do this, you include it as part of your answer, usually as a fraction or a decimal. Let's take a look at a share it example. Shania and Elizabeth want to share seven cookies. How many cookies can each girl get if they each get the same amount? So we're dividing seven divided by two, which is three remainder one. And what that means is if we divide seven cookies between two girls, they will each get three cookies and there will be one left over. It's easy to break a cookie in half to share it between two girls. The answer here is three and a half cookies. Each girl gets three whole cookies and half of the extra cookie. Only use share it when you can easily share the leftovers between the number of groups. You have to make sure it makes sense in real life. Share it often works with food, money, and measurement. Let's review our three options. When we're interpreting remainders in word problems, we can round up and add one more to our quotient usually when we cannot leave someone or something out, like the eggs or the students going to the field trip. We can ignore it. We can drop the remainder when it cannot be easily shared, like that lollipop that needed to be split between three people. We can't do that. Or we can share it, and we can include the remainder as a fraction or a decimal when it makes sense to share, like that leftover cookie, we can break it in half and give half to Shania and half to Elizabeth. This video was created by La Fontaine of Knowledge. Click the link in the description for lesson materials that go along with the video. And subscribe to my channel for more videos like this.